welcome to Graphics Pro Expo, Irving, Texas. I'm your host, Reagan Dickinson, and today I'm with Latana Robertson. Latana is a master screen printer, a Corel expert, <coughs> author and consultant with a popular YouTube channel, Latana, the Lady Print Boss. Uh, Latana, you also run uh, T-Shirt Shop Dallas, is that correct? Yes, ye yes. <laughs> you, you know, and, and speaking of the YouTube channel, uh, one of your video discusses the t-shirt shortages that we've been having, and there are other supply chain issues as well. I would suppose like inks, well, other types of equipment. Uh, what approach have you taken to help mitigate these issues? Well, the first thing that we did was to send out emails. We do templated emails. So whenever a customer wants a quote, we send out an email. And in that email, we're, get, we're, we're letting them know up front exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. That, hey, we're having shortages. We're having issues with this. And it's not just us. It's across the board. We're also, um, we were having issues with getting not so much as t-shirts because with, with t-shirts you can have shortages from different companies but you can still get t-shirts mm -hmm. our issue came in mainly with red inks uh, white inks so we started we started buying bulk stuff we looked at what I did is I went in and I looked at what shirts were normally selling what colors were normally printing I'm a technical person so I look at the numbers figure out what it is that we need to be ordering um, my biggest headache from the shortage was emulsion because you know that you can have t-shirts and you can have ink and you can have everything but if you don't have emulsion then you know you you and you're dialed in using a certain emulsion yeah. then when there's a shortage you've got to go back and go over that so I had to reach out to a lot of companies that and just really kind of broaden our horizons on um, companies that we were dealing with, we had to change the number of prints that you, the number of inks that you could get on a shirt. So what we did is I looked and I said, okay, we mainly make our money off of one and two color prints. So I kind of knocked out doing more than two colors. If there was a job that if we were short on red ink and there was a job that maybe we could sublimate, we would sublimate that instead of uh -huh. screen printing it. So we kind of just looked at the jobs and kind of figured that out as we went along. Okay. And you found that that was effective for you? That was, that was really effective for me. Um, and also buying, you know, buying up as much, many primary colors that we could buy so that we could mix stuff. We didn't have a lot of problems with inks, uh, with like your basic colors. My problem came in by trying to get my hands on specialty inks like the puff inks, um, uh, the uh, powder to do my plastic salt transfers, things like that. That's okay. where we, and so we had to go into other things. You know, if you can't get puff ink, what do you do? You buy puff <laughs> right. vinyl. <laughs> you right, know, yeah. if you can't get glitter ink, you buy glitter vinyl yeah. so we just kind of changed some of the processes and was there some communication going to your customers as well most so definitely. that they were kind of in the loop on what you were doing from that standpoint most definitely so um, if a customer emails most of most of our stuff is now done through email or on on the website okay um, my bigger customers they're going we're going back and forth through email so my thing is in that initial email is I let them know what's up because I've found that if you're being really personal and you're upfront um, and letting your customers know, hey, you know, there's an issue and it's not just with us, it's everywhere because you don't want them to leave and go somewhere else. Right. It's, it's, you know, across the board. But as soon as we find out that there is an issue, we're going to address that issue and we're going to give you not one alternative, but we're going to give you two or three. So you mentioned sublimation as an alternate process that you could use given some of the shortages. Um, and I noticed that you use a lot of different uh, print processes. How did you uh, choose which process, or how do you choose which process to use for imprinting? So our main printing process is going to be sub. Um, it's going to be screen, screen printing. printing. Right, yeah. It's going to be screen printing. Um, I always want to screen print because I'm just you know a diehard screen printer. Yeah. But um, that's going to depend on how many shirts you're going to order how many colors you're gonna, that, that you're gonna need. 
Mm -hmm. um, if we may look at a job and you give me a call and you're looking at 12 pieces, I really don't want to screen print 12 pieces. Right. Um, I'm looking at the cost that I have involved in those t-shirts. And also, you know, hey, if, if, if it's more cost effective for me to just, or even faster, sometimes we may pay a little, a little bit more, but if it's more cost effective for me to get a job out quickly on 12 shirts, um, I'll sublimate it, or I may even, if it's a multicolored job and it's, let's say it's two or three shirts, I may send those out for screen printed transfers and do that that way um, because I don't want to tie up, you can't tie up your presses for a six color job sure. that's, you know, a person wants one or two shirts. But, and so we try to stay within that, at least that 24 piece range when we're doing um, one and two colors. Anything above three colors, I try to stay 48 pieces or more. And when you're doing full color printing, I try to stay at 72 pieces. Okay, so that's your cutoff there. Yeah, so, so that's, stick, right. that's kind of my cutoff to where I know where my bread and butter is. And how has your business evolved over the years? Whew. So over the years, we so we, I originally started out with nothing but a heat press and vinyl. I was doing the vinyl, yeah. and uh, you know, once you start picking vinyl, uh, vinyl was it was decent back then, but it wasn't you know uh, the best printing method for me. As I started doing, getting more and more customers, I wanted a faster way. So then we got into doing. Um, I was doing inkjet transfers. I made a lot of money off of inkjet transfers. I've made over a hundred thousand bucks off of inkjet transfers in a year. I was doing. Uh, a lot of those and I still want it more so we end up getting into screen printing and then from screen printing getting an automatic machine and just going from there I never have wanted to be a large company I'm, I'm, I'm mom and pop kids so my the way that we have evolved more is probably going to be um, as far as the way that we market getting online, getting into e-commerce, that type of thing. I think that's where we have really excelled because we're not doing much more than what we were doing 10 years ago mm -hmm. as far as printing and equipment, but we are doing a lot more as far as on the marketing side and we've really evolved when it comes to talking to our customers. Okay, well let's talk about that a little bit and what, what has been your most effective marketing tool over the past few years? And I want to kind of stick a pin in that e-commerce side as well. Okay. But let's talk about the marketing. And okay. What's been effective so, for you? What's been really effective for me is email marketing. That's been and and not your traditional email marketing where you're sending out you know uh, blast flyers with a lot of different products on it. Right. For me, I do my email marketing. And I make it. It looks like it's coming from me. Like I'm just talking to you. So it's real, I call it personal email marketing. So I, you know, every every email that's sent out, it's sent out with a greeting by name. Um, and the way that I design it is pretty much just text and video. You know, a lot of times I'll get, because I do YouTube, I'll get right. in front of the camera and I'll put my hand up, hey, you know, and they click a button in their email and it's me, they're telling you about this great deal, what I got going on, I know you have an event coming up. So just kind of like tuning into our customers. We know after you've been doing it for so long, you know when your customers are having events and you go back and you just follow the data. And so that's what I do. I go back, I follow it, I look and I see oh, Ross had an event at this time last year, we need to go back and we need to make sure that we reach out to them. Because with COVID, a lot of people thought that we went under. Because for some time we were closed, but I'm not built to break. So <laughs> we were doing shirts at home. We were, we were knocking down walls in my father's house and putting in equipment. And we were doing everything that we needed to do just to, you know, to make it through COVID. So uh, just reaching out and letting those people know that, hey, we, we're still here. Yeah. And um, I just have that try to build that close relationship with, uh, with people. 
Yeah, it's interesting that you include a video with that. So I'm assuming that's a link that goes to a YouTube page that goes to a YouTube video. Is that um, how so, you do it or where does that go? So it can be done one or two ways. Yeah. Sometimes it's a link that goes to our YouTube page. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is a link that goes to a page on the website, kind of okay. like a landing page. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I do it that way, where it goes to the website, then of course there's a button there where you can go ahead and just place that order and you don't have to even contact me back. So <laughs> yeah, right. that makes it, okay, that, so that's a really, really good way because it keeps you off of the phone. Right. And far more effective to do it that way than instead of linking to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Because like you they said, go you to the, the yeah. YouTube, they see you, but they don't, they don't follow up with an action. You're going to get a phone call. And you really want, I want that customer to go ahead and place an order, right. you know, or email me. And tell me about incorporating and using um, e-commerce for your business. So we always had a website, but with COVID, I, I always wanted people to order online. People would not order online. So unfortunately, but fortunately for me, that when COVID hit, that was the time that I said, well, people are gonna have to order online. They've gotta order from Amazon, they've gotta order online. So we went in, we did our e-commerce site, set everything up where people could order online. And I also have a, because we couldn't see people in person, I put a tab on the website where you could book an appointment. And so by me letting those people go on and book an appointment, I then decided, hey, the best way for me to do this is through me doing Google Meet, um, you know, uh, Google Meet, I'm lost, at a loss for words, Google Meet interviews, or not Google Meet interviews, appointments. So people would come on to click on there, schedule an appointment, when they come okay, on, yeah. boom, there I am in the showroom. So it's like you're still shopping, and I'm there showing you stuff, but you're at the comfort of your home. And then that just kind of took off for me because it was it was different. Customers like different. They they loved it, you know, and so that kind of took off. And then when that took off, I just started thinking, okay, instead of me putting up pictures on the website, we need to be putting up videos. And I started looking at different distributors' videos, things like Canva Bellis videos, Next Level, all the different brands looking at their videos and saying, well, hey, I can use this as a marketing tool when I just, you know, just started using their stuff to help me sell more because that's what it's there for. Right, because you're selling their product, yeah, right? That's, but you're yeah. printing on them. Yeah, so. you're selling their product, you know, and it, like most of the major um, distributors have, you know, they have an end where they have marketing tools for you to use. It's just that a lot of people don't use it. So when I started thinking about that stuff because I've been using pictures and stuff for years. I was like, yeah. okay, well, I know video attracts me. So, you know, maybe it'll attract someone else. And when I started doing the email videos and that took off, I was like, okay. Because now they can, you know, if you can't come in and see it, then you can see it on a real live person, you know, and that just makes a big difference. Yeah. And it increases cycles. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You started in the in the fashion business, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, my degree is in uh, apparel design. Okay. So I started out, I, I wanted to be a fashion designer, right, and design clothes. Um, after college, I was stuck in a pattern room, and I said, well, this ain't for me. You know, <laughs> hey, I right. want to be the one over there drawing the designs. Yeah. And, but, I, you know, I mean, working in an industrial sewing machine, it was no fun. It was hot. Yeah. And so... Um, I talked to my mom, she gave me $5,000 and I opened a little spot and it flopped. It flopped. And she told me, she said, you know, hey, um, you're not built to break, you, you know, so she gave me some more money. Yeah. And I started back doing something else and then eventually um, I opened up a little big boutique and I was buying stuff. I was going to uh, New York City and buying stuff over in Chinatown. And um, that was, you know, back and forth. It was, it was great, but I was going with the trends and it was fad. And um, 
one day my son just happened to come in and show me a magazine that said printing on t-shirts was the hottest thing and all these hip-hop rappers they were yeah. doing t-shirts and right. he said mom i want to do t-shirts i went out the next day i bought a geo night press and the rest is history <laughs> i looked at the t-shirt i said this is a this is a t-shirt you know this is my canvas and that just went it just went wild from there yeah. for me i just knew that that was what this left-handed girl was going to do, you know, because everybody always said, I was always jumping back and forth from one thing to another thing. What do I want to print on? What do I want to do? Yeah. And t-shirts, just they just do it for me. What, what did you learn from that experience, especially the, the failed business, right? The first one. Were there things that you learned through that that you've been able to, to kind of carry with you and help you in your business now that you know you've done that and there's something, there's a lesson that always follows you around. Is there something like that for you? Yeah, it was to do more research, do more research, um, not feel like I have to do everything. Um, and so really from that experience, I just learned to do a lot of research. But through doing t-shirts, I learned how to perfect the art of no. And what I mean by that is when I started doing screen printing and getting into doing t-shirts, I had people who would come and they would want me to do just everything. Mm. And you try to do that and then you mess up. And then you kind of, you know, you get a stain on your name because you took a job that you know you didn't know how to do it um, or you know that you didn't have the right equipment to do it, but you tried it anyways. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and so I learned how to say no to certain things yeah. and how to pick and choose, really how to pick and choose my jobs and find my niche. Yeah. I'll print for anybody, but um, there are just certain jobs that I feel are better. It's better for me to outsource that job. Mm -hmm. So I work with different printers and try to send jobs out to people who are, you know, there are people who, who print better than me. There are people who can do like full color graphics, long winter, so I'll send yeah. something out to somebody else and you know, that works for me. Right. And it helps save time in my business also. It helps save a lot of time. What are you looking at? Are you looking at a particular process or technology going forward? Or is there something that you're looking at next maybe to add to your repertoire? You know, I've talked to several different people about the DTF printing. Yeah. And um, I've got my eye on it, but I'm waiting. I'm, I'm kind of waiting on someone here, on an American company to just, you know, I want to make sure that everything is okay with it. I don't really, I can't see a way that I can make um, t-shirts with it faster than I can screen print um, but I like the technology but I'm not I'm not liking the headaches that I'm hearing so far You're right so I'm just I'm, I'm just sitting back waiting you're always looking for that perfect way to print a black t-shirt you know and yeah. so I love hybrid screen printing I just can't afford it but you know so I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that perfect, you know, way to print a print a black T-shirt. What is the best way that you found to print that black T-shirt? Screen printing. Right. Yeah, screen printing. But is there right. any, anything in particular in the process that you do to make sure that you get the fidelity you're after? Um, it all starts with the artwork. Yeah. It starts with the artwork. It starts with you know having a good screen, having a really nice stencil when you're screen printing, and um, you know creating a good base good under base, using a good garment to print on. Uh, a lot of different things that go into the process. Right. Um, we've had some fabrics that, you know, we have to do a roller screen and things like that to get mm -hmm. a smooth base. Yeah. But um, it's just really about dialing it in. But I, I, I love screen printing. I mean, it's, the, it's just the greatest print method in the world to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I don't think that we would stop screen printing anytime soon, you know, because you, you, you can get it fast. You can do it faster. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people now, um, what I've been experiencing with 
the YouTube channel is there are so many people who are now smaller businesses that are getting started. They're looking for a digital option to get started and a yeah. lot of people seem to be moving away from screen printing until they figure out that they can't print that black shirt. Right. <laughs> you know, or get the they, volume that they want. Or get to, the volume right? yeah. yeah, or get the volume that, that you want. The, right. the volume that you want at a cost effective method because really and truly screen printing goes people think that screen printing just takes forever but it really goes pretty fast yeah. once you once you got it down. It sounds like what you're saying though as far as getting that perfect print on a black T shirt, it boils down to the details within the process itself. Yeah. Right, the stencil, the screen, yeah. the artwork. Yeah. Everything you, you have to do. Pay attention to everything every step you do way. before you get to press. Yeah. Everything that you do before you get to press. I I say it always starts with the artwork because you know there are a lot of things that you can alleviate on press if your art is good. Yeah. So if you got good artwork and you got good stencils that don't have pinholes, that have good tension then you're good to go. You know, you can register that job and once you get on there, it's just smooth like butter. It's, we rock it. So if you, if you get artwork from the client, do you give them very specific guidelines about what you need for artwork to ensure that good print? We do, we yeah. do. So a lot of the companies that I deal with, they have art departments. So they're gonna see me over that perfect art. But then there are people who don't have uh, they just have an idea or they googled something and they're like okay can you do this and i'm like no i can't do that but i can create you something similar okay and then that's when the art fees come in and then we'll go i'll go in usually i'll design that stuff myself i've had a hard time finding people who um design stuff the way that i that you need it to be done for screen printing like right. you've got a lot of different you know, people that are reach out, you get email. I get emails all the time from different companies that you know say, "Hey, they do separations, but when they do it, it comes over, and it's not what I want." So I pretty much do that stuff in house. Yeah. But um, there are a lot of people now that are. I know there's uh, Seps.io that's came out, and they they're doing separations, and a couple of other people, companies that are doing separations that. Um, you know, you could reach out to, mm -hmm. but we pretty much we pretty much keep it in house. Hey, what trends are you seeing right now that affect your business, or that you see affecting your business over the next couple of years? Is there, is there anything going on out there? Maybe it's particular to your market, but what's affecting you as a business right now? Well, one thing that has really been affecting us as a business is that companies are now going for more fashion forward t-shirts. Okay. Um, Can you define fashion forward so, for me on a t-shirt? So when I say stuff like side seams, uh, uh, okay. nice softer cottons, right. because now it's all about people wanting to wear your shirt. So when I'm selling, instead of me just selling you just a basic plain tee, which is still great, you know, which is still great. Um, I can upsell because these companies, they're willing to spend more now. A lot of people say, hey, it's COVID, people aren't spending more, but they're, spend they're spending more. It's just a matter of how you do it. Yeah. You know, you hit them with what they ask for, and then you give them a better option. Because normally, if you call me and you want a quote, and I ask you, you know, well, hey, hey, what are you looking to spend on a t-shirt? And you tell me that you're looking to spend 10 bucks. I know that you've got some more money in your pocket. <laughs> right. And so it's, you know, as a small printer, it's my job to get it because every bit counts. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, what do you think is the most important lesson that you've learned in your business? If you were to pinpoint in, in one or two, possibly, right? Um, so that goes back to the um, saying no and just kind of right, sure. like defining, figuring out who my customer is. Okay. And who. Maybe not exactly who my customer is, but who I wanted my customer to be. Okay. The type of customer that I was looking for. Um, how, how are you doing that search? How are you narrowing that down? Well, it gets kind of technical. I go into everything from how much that customer makes, um, whether he or she is married, um, down to the type of music that you like. Um, we go. I go into a lot of different factors when I'm trying to figure out who that customer is. But I pretty much I start with your income. What what income bracket that customer is in? What are their interests? Interests? 
Um, when I'm looking at a company, I look at companies with 100 employees. I want you to be able to buy 100 shirts from me. I love restaurants. Restaurants have a big turnover of employees, so they're going to always buy t-shirts. Right. Um, an old man told me that one time. He said, <laughs> hey, you need, to, you need to go for restaurants. And then I started thinking, okay, and then construct construction, that's a good business to sell t-shirts to, too, because they get dirty. And so, you know, landscapers, things like that. So when I go, I'm strategically targeting companies and I may just target a Pacific, um, let's say if it's restaurants that month, I'm making ads for restaurants and I'm email marketing out to restaurants. I, um, I used to do the cold walk-in, not the cold call, you know, and, um, then I started doing cold calls, and now with with email marketing, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Because when I started, we were you know, internet was just you know coming out, so we right. had to walk and hit the pavement and do flyers and stuff like that. So, you know, now we can do that email marketing, and it just works. Video calls and conferences and yeah. stuff like that, and companies love that because you're meeting them where they are. I went and I rented a um, I rented a conference room um, in a high rise just to meet my corporate customers. And when they walk in, they're like, what "Kind of screen printing shop is this?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but they love it because you know my thing is, "Oh, I'm meeting you where you are," and they 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 love it. You know that you're meeting them and they and they're getting that different vibe and they're getting to see me not full of ink and all of that stuff so it works for me okay great well i really appreciate your time today and for coming out to the show and spending some time and uh, thank you so much for joining us today thank you for having me it's been a pleasure